motion on both sides of the ball. You watch the film. What, how, how do you assess what's going on there and why you're having those issues? Yeah, it's very uh, uh, defensively. It's um, you know, I've evaluated every one of them, and it's very frustrating. And either, uh, like I've told our coaching staff, and as you know in life, uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter what you know. It matters what your kids know. And um, there were uh, five different occasions that um, we had the perfect call. And it doesn't, the play doesn't get made now. We've got to continue to see if uh, we're not communicating it effectively or if uh, what's causing, or is it a lack of focus. Uh, but we've got to continue to work on it. Uh, there's times they get you. They have, you know, Paxton Lynch is, is a good quarterback, and he made some throws in that game that we haven't seen a bunch of. But uh, when you do have the right call, you've got to get off the field. And offensively, we've got to continue to, uh, to work on what we think we can do and, and you know, and try to just stay with those things. Because a lot of times your guys are in perfect position. I think tackle probably, you know, I didn't count them, but I'm sure you had a chance to do that. Uh, how do you get that correct? Yeah, we had, we had 30 missed tackles in the game. And, uh, you know, go back to uh, we probably the last few weeks uh, laid off the endo, uh, some trying to rest our legs for this 10-game stretch that we have. But it uh, looks like we need to go back to, to extending practice a little bit and having the end of time to, uh, to tackle uh, because it sure was that between the, the five right calls that you don't have and then the missed tackles that would have resulted in a non-conversion uh, that it made for a long afternoon. Given any thought about maybe pulling some red shirts off some guys on the back end like Montreal Cusses or Monty Linton, Sean Carter's. Some of those guys? Yeah, we think about all those things. Those are difficult decisions with, uh, with five games left for sure. Uh, we'll continue to talk, but uh, don't uh, don't have anything to report today in that regard. Uh, Coach, obviously you coach some uh, great receivers. How does Laquan Treadwell compare to Kerry Best? Uh, he's good as any I've coached. Uh, obviously, I I've, uh, was a receiver coach here. and. Uh, had Mike Wallace and Shea Hodge, which were two really good ones, and then uh, and Dexter for a while, and and then Dante was was the best we had had until, uh, and Laquan is right up there with him, if not better. He is uh, really strong, talented, physical, and, uh, and playing at a high level right now. He, he's he's uh, arguably the best I've coached. You mentioned playing with passion over the last five games. Trey brought up the question of heart after the game. How, how do you feel? Do you feel that's a, a valid point right now? What's your, your take on that? Uh, tell me again what, who, who brought what point? Trey Elston mentioned that he was concerned that some players were not playing with yeah. heart. Do you feel the passion is there right now? Well, we're going to, we'll see Saturday night. You know, we'll, I assure you we'll do like we've done every week and prepare them to have that. Um, it's an individual decision. I'm going to do everything within my power to make sure that that occurs. And I think there's a, there was some passion in our team meeting yesterday by individuals. At the end of the day, every man's got to decide, uh, you know, his role and, and what that looks like for him. We're going to try our best to, to motivate them to do it. I'm confident that, that we're going to play with great passion Saturday.